Well, praise the Lord. I want to welcome you all to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. I tell you, it, it is a hot day today. But you know what? We're still here. We're still here. We're still trusting. Still believing. Still know that all things work together for good to them that love them. And to those who are called upon to his purpose. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I want to open up in prayer. Amen. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you have given us and allow us to come into your presence one more time. Your name, through faith in your name, we are able to take a stand for righteousness and to know that we are not alone. So, Father, I come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome to lead and guide us in all truth and to show us things to come. Father, we need you now. We can't do nothing without you. And so we trust you, Lord. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In the glorious and mighty and majestic name of Jesus. And all that Greek that said, amen, amen, and amen. Welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. We have a message that we've been teaching on and ministering on for the year of 2022. And we're dealing with the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You know, it just, it, it's just like being reacquainted with the Holy Spirit. How do you know that the Holy Spirit, He is with us, working with us every day, trying to, and, he, and He's doing His part by trying to help us to overcome uh, the struggles that we have in life, that we deal with in life. How many of you deal with struggles that you know that you can't deal with it on your own? You have to trust on the, you have to trust in the Holy Spirit, trust in the Lord, amen? For, to help you to help you through these situations. I know what I'm talking about because I, I have I have to deal with everything myself. Amen. God knows exactly how to deliver us. He knows exactly how to heal us. But he's looking at our hearts. Are you ready? Are you truly ready to be delivered? Amen. The Holy Spirit wants to help us. So let's learn more of his functions and how he operates in the body of Christ. See, the Holy Spirit was sent. To the believer, which we are, Amen. And so let's see what he's what he's what he's dealing with. Why he, he's going to help us in our situation today and tomorrow and in, in the days to come, Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at the book of the book of uh, First Corinthians chapter twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve. Let me change my music. I forgot. Glory to God. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. Glory to God. Amen. So now, as we were saying, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And let's look at verse number 1. Verse number 1 is a very important scripture that the Lord would have us to, to, to read today. And it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Amen. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. God doesn't want us to be ignorant of the gifts that he had placed in the church. Amen. Now we want, we, we've been ministering on the Holy Spirit for some time now, but uh, Jesus, lived, uh, Jesus left his followers with the, the responsibility the responsibility to extend the gospel message. Our 
you might say, to take the gospel message throughout the earth. Amen. And you know, to take the gospel message throughout the earth, you need more than just words. Amen. You need power. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse number 8, he said, For ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the other parts of the earth. Jesus did not leave his followers with uh, such a great uh, responsibility without giving them the ability to fulfill the, the challenges that they will be facing. The challenges that we'll be facing, folks, is not uh, natural. They are of the supernatural. They are spiritual. And so God has given us supernatural, spiritual tools to carry out the assignment that he has given us, the church. Amen. As the church. Amen. So now as we prepare our hearts, as we prepare our hearts, we're going to see that God has, has already has already given us everything that we will ever need to carry out the assignment. But we have to understand what the, what the things that he has given us, and then we have to begin to walk in that knowledge. Amen? To walk in that knowledge. So notice what he said in, again in Romans, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1. Let's read that one more time. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 1. He said, and, and, and now concerning the spiritual gift, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Amen. I will not have you. See, this chapter introduced the this this thing, this this introduced the followers of my, my God to a to a very very important area of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what is what are you talking about, Pastor? God wants to introduce us to the spiritual gifts that's available to believers. He wants to introduce us to the spiritual gifts that are available to the believers. Amen. And the guidelines will be given to help you to discover your own spiritual gifts. See, God wants you to understand that every believer has been given spiritual gifts. Amen. Especially those who've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Those who've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now notice here, notice this now. The word spiritual means I mean, uh, it means characterized as controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Spiritual means our characterized are controlled by the Holy Spirit. A gift is something freely given. What are you talking about, Pastor? God, gifts are not for sale. They are freely given to those who open up their hearts and simply receive. Amen? And simply receive. So when we come to God, we must believe that God is who he said he is and that the gift that he has prepared for us to receive. Don't think that you have to be something special to receive the promises of God or the gifts of God. God is looking at our hearts, not our status in life. Amen. He's not looking at our statue. He's not looking at our accomplishments. Amen. He's not even looking at our education. He is looking at our heart. Amen. How our heart is set toward the things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So there's a difference between the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of of the Holy Spirit there's a great difference in the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit you see the Holy Spirit God gave the Holy Spirit to you as a gift amen but with that gift that God has given you God has given you gifts within the gift that he's given you amen so during this lesson during this teaching that we are coming into right now we're going to do our best to unfold the gifts that God has given us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, as we study this, and I hope that you are, and I hope that you are, uh, uh, are going to share this message with your friends, with your peers, amen, uh, your neighbors and your, your co-workers and so forth, so on, your family members, because you see, we can all learn from this. 
Okay, we can all learn from this. So the the gift of the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit occurred on the day of Pentecost. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit. What do you mean, the gift of the Holy Spirit? It 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 came forth on the day of Pentecost. Look with me in Acts chapter two. Amen. Amen. In Acts chapter 2, we'll see when the gift of the Holy Spirit came to the church. Amen. In Acts chapter 2. And that this is something that this is something that we all need to see, know, and understand. Amen. In Acts chapter 2. It said, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Look at verse number two. It said, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. So the Holy Spirit came in as a rushing mighty wind. This was the gift of the Holy Spirit that God gave to all believers, to the church. Amen. This is the gift that God gave to the church. Now the gift of the Holy Spirit is for everyone. But with that gift, there are gifts within the gift. What do you mean, Pastor? You see, the gift was given to the church. Now, the gifts of the Spirit came with the gift of the Spirit. So we have to understand that in order to uh, 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 make, in order to apply this this to our heart, to our lives. Amen. And so now, look what it says in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Let me, and let's look, at, let's look at some scriptures here. John chapter 14. And I want us to start, John chapter 14, look at, start reading verse number 16. John chapter 14, verse number 16 and 17. And it reads, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Amen. And he shall give you another comforter. This is this is the this is, this is a good powerful word that, that God has given us right now. And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give us another comforter, amen, that he may abide with you forever. I like verse number 17 says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and get this, folks, and shall be in you. And shall be in you. Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit is the gift that God gave to the church. Or you might say to the believers. Those who have acknowledged Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So this is the this is portion of what God gave. The gift of the Holy Spirit has already been given to in answer to the promise that God gave the church. Amen. That God gave his followers. When did God give the, the, the promise? You can look. You can see it. You can see it right there in the book of Acts. Amen. In the book of Acts. Excuse me. In the book of Luke, chapter twenty-four, verse number forty-nine. You can also so see it again right there in Acts chapter one, verse number I think verse number four. Amen. Then you can also see uh, right here in uh, John. Is it Mark chapter sixteen? Mark chapter sixteen and verse number uh, twenty. Mark chapter sixteen and verse number twenty. Amen. We can see something there that I believe will benefit or help us to understand a little bit better. Verse number 20 says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Confirming the word with signs following. See, when you are walking in the presence of God, when you are walking in the gifts and the calling that God has placed within you, God is going to, he's going to, he's going to confirm the word with signs following. He's going to confirm the word with signs following. Amen. So now, the gifts and talents, the gifts and talents. See, there's a difference between the gift and the talents. See, a lot of people are very talented, but they don't have the gift of the spirit. But they can... But they 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 have practiced so much. They have operated so much in a certain area. They have walked in and been around certain certain people operating certain talents and certain. So they inquired these talents. They re, they began to um, 
liked them so much that they started imaging the people that they was around until they became very talented also. Amen. But not so with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the it, 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 it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not moved just just by talent. The Holy Spirit moved by the Spirit is a supernatural move of God working in and through the believer. Amen. See, the supernatural gift of the Spirit of God can help you to to see something that a person is going through without even without that person even telling you. Amen. Your talent cannot do that, but the Holy Spirit can. The Holy Spirit can. Amen. So when we are when we are operating in the gifts of the Spirit, that means we we are we've been equipped with the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. See, a talent is a is a natural ability inherited at birth. Some may you know some may inherit at birth, or some may develop it through, like I said, training. See, a talent is not the gift of the Holy Spirit. A talent is something that you er learn or inherited, amen, through, you know, bloodline or whatever, whatever, amen. So now, spiritual gift is a supernatural ability which did not come by inheritance or training. It is a spirit, it is a, a special ability given by the Holy Spirit to be used for Pacific spiritual purposes. Amen. So when the Holy Spirit began to move, when the Holy Spirit began to uh, give you unctions and everything, whatever you, what have you, you begin to experience things in the spiritual realm that you probably, or you might be accustomed to, but you, there's a lot of people not even accustomed to doing it. Like we was out walking yesterday, my, my wife and I, we was out walking yesterday. And, uh, and this gentleman, he began to talk to me. This gentleman began to talk to me. Yeah, my daughter, she was with us too. Yeah. But uh, my, but, but this gentleman started talking to us. And uh, we were uh, we was sitting there just conversating about fishing and about the boat that he just inquired. Amen. And, uh, and, I, and I was talking to him about the boat. And I was talking, I was talking to him about his motorcycle too because I, I have a motorcycle. I don't have a boat, but I have a motorcycle. I think about getting a boat too, but that's 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 between me and my wife and the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But uh, the thing about it, is, the thing about it, that as I was talking to this young man, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I began to get an unction by the Holy Spirit concerning this man. Amen. Concerning this man. And then all, and, and then it was, it began to be so strong that I I, I had to open up and just uh, minister to this man. Amen. How did I do that? It was the gift of the Spirit came in operation. Who did it? The Spirit of God did. It was not something that I, uh, I activated myself. It was something that the Holy Spirit activated. It was a supernatural gift. Amen. And I began to talk to this man, began to minister to this man. And he said, wow, I received that. You know, he, because then I said, did it, it just make any sense to you? He said, yes, everything you said is pretty much right on target. It makes sense. And I, and I said, and I said, look, I said, look at God. God is concerned about you. God loves you. He sees where you are, but he, and He loves you. Amen. But the thing about it that it was not a talented gift. That was the gift of the Holy Spirit that's in operation. Amen. The gift of the Holy Spirit in operation. And soon, and, and later on, we're going to be, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about uh, the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. We're going to talk about them. We're going to uh, see. Amen. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see some of them because we're gonna be studying them very soon, and we're gonna we want you to be able to uh, identify with the gift that God may or uh, may that He may have uh, imparted unto you. Amen. So now let's look at this one. Let's look at let's look at this now because you see. Let me just go. On. Let me just keep going. I don't want to get. I don't want to get bogged down because spiritual gifts provide spiritual capabilities far greater than the natural talent or natural abilities. Amen. And as we and as we uh, study and as we uh, get into these, Amen. I believe that you're gonna find you're gonna find yourself think, well, 
I remember that happened to me. And you're going to see that God is, is, is not partial to whom he shared a gift with. Because if you have been called, you have been appointed, you probably got gifts. Amen. See, the purpose of gifts of the Holy Spirit are listed in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Now, these are the gifts. This is some of the gifts that God gave the church. Okay, so let's turn over there. Let's turn over there. Ephesians chapter 4. That's in Ephesians chapter 4. Now, I want you to look at verse, we're going to start reading here at verse number, verse number 12. Amen. Now, let's start reading verse number 11. And God gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. See, these are gifts. Now, listen, what he, why, did, why did he give them? Verse number 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. So we see that God wants to bring you to a place where you will be able to hear, know, and understand who you are as a child of God. See, for the, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till, now listen at this one. Till we all, my God, I like that. Till we all come into what? The unity of the faith. The unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto a perfect man. Oh, glory to God. This, this is verse number 13 we're talking about now. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. Of the fullness of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now look at now look, look at look at the next verse. Verse number 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried away about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and by cunning craftiness whereby they lie and, and wait to deceive. Look at verse number 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Amen. So when we come to understand the gift that God gave the church, which is the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. <clears throat> now, the purpose of those gifts was to, to do what? Verse number 12. For the perfecting of the saints. In other words, to equip the saints. For the equipping of the saints. Amen. Now, according to according to this passage, the purpose of the Holy Spirit are are to let we get let's listen let's look at it. Number one, perfect the saints. Number two, promote the work of the ministry. Number three, to edify and to edify edify Christ and the church. Amen. And so now, as we look at that, as we, as we look at that, notice, notice this right here. The objective goals of spiritual gifts are that we will, number one, become united in the faith. Number two, develop our knowledge of Christ. Number three, develop and perfection with Christ as our Model. <laughs> uh, okay. Number, num, number four. Number four. Become stable. Not deceived by false doctrine. And number five. Become mature Christians. Becomes mature spiritually. Mature spiritual Christians. Amen. See, now this is what God, this is what God is expecting. He wants you to become spiritual mature. 
Amen. That's why. That's why I said for, perfect for edifying. Amen. For the for perfect for perfecting the saints, for the work of the ministry, for edifying the body of Christ. Amen. Till we all come in the unity of the knowledge of the Son of, of Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. So we see that God is is giving us, He's giving us uh, the the tools that we need to bring ourselves to the place where we can be strong to do the work He's called us to do. Now, the Trinity and the gifts, the Trinity and the gifts. You learn you learned earlier that the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. We talked about that what uh, a few a few about a couple months ago, two three months ago, about the Trinity. Amen. Amen. The Trinity of God. Amen. All these persons, all three persons of the Trinity are involved in empowering believers with spiritual gifts. See, because they all, the, because the three, which is the Trinity, is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And actually, they're all just one. But we look at them as three because the Bible says it. Amen. And so we we just gonna, we're gonna believe what the scripture said. Amen. So now, so now when we look at in in, in uh, First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse number four through six. First Corinthians twelve, verse four through six. Let me turn over there. First Corinthians twelve, verse four through six, and it reads, and these, and there are diversities of gifts. Come on, listen to me now. And there are diversities of gift, but the same spirit. And there are difference of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all and all. Amen. It is the same God which worketh all and all. So we see that God, we see that God is, 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 is he, he's, the, he's, the, he's, the, he's the one that don't change. If anybody going to do some changing, it's going to be you and me. It's going to be you and me. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you might say God and the Lord Jesus Christ are all mentioned in this passage. They're in involvement in spiritual in spiritual gifts is shown in the following I got a little chart here amen and if you all was uh, had your, your, your notes that I gave you you have this chart also amen okay verse 4 spirit divers gifts different view. Verse 5, it says, Lord, that was his ministration, different, administ different ministries. And verse 6 says, God, diverse operation, different ways gift are used. Amen. So, so spiritual, so spiritual gifts are, if, if you just if you can take what I just, you know, you can look at verse number, verse number four, verse number five, verse number six. You can see that these names that I just called out are associated with these particular scriptures. Amen. With these particular scriptures. Amen. So the gift of the Holy, the gift of the Spirit are also given to the church as weapons, spiritual, uh, spiritual weapons. Amen. To conquer. The spiritual forces of Satan. Or you some say the spiritual forces of darkness. Well, that both are true. Amen. They're both true. Spiritual forces of Satan, spiritual forces of darkness, or you might say evil spirits. It's all true. Amen. So let's look at the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, and verse number 12. Ephesians chapter 6, and verse number 12, and it reads. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, there it is, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
So now, the distribution of the gifts. Each believer has at least one spiritual gift. Each believer has at least one spiritual gift. Amen. So now, how you how you going how you going to define that? That's, well, let's look at something here. First Peter chapter. First Peter chapter four, and look at verse number ten. First Peter four ten. Glory, 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 glory. First Peter four verse ten said. As every believer had received the gift, even so minister the same one to one to to another. So minister the same one to another as good as good stewards of the what? Of the manifold grace of God. Of the manifold grace of God. Amen. So every man had received the gift. Notice what it said. Every man had received the gift. That's similar. The gift. Even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That's 1 Peter chapter 4 verse number 10. Amen. See, and then let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 again. Now this time we're going to look at verse number 7 and then verse number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There we go. 1 Corinthians verse chapter 12. There we go. Verse 7 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to, this, here it is again, every man to profit with all. Amen. I'll read that again. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now look at verse number 11. But all these work that one and self same spirit, know what it said now, dividing to every man certainly as he will. So God is the one that distributes the gifts. Amen. God is the one that distributes the gifts. Not we don't we don't determine who's gonna get what gift or what gift that we're gonna operate in. We operate as the spirit wills. Amen. Now notice what it said, verse number 12. For as to for as the body is one and had many members, and all the members of that one body, many are one body. So also is Christ. Verse number 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free. And have been all made to drink in the same spirit. Amen. So, so God knows exactly what, what, what we need right now. And uh, my question is to you, are you ready to go a little higher? Are you ready to advance your spiritual walk? Are you ready to take a step of faith? Amen. Because every believer has a has a has at least one spiritual gift. We each have a responsibility to discover and use our gifts. Every one of us. That's why to become reacquainted with the Holy Spirit is so important. So that we can be not only reacquainted with the Holy Spirit, but that the Holy Spirit can can cause us to focus our attention in areas of our spiritual life that we have somewhat left dormant or have, have not uh, been willing to deal with. Amen. 
So God is wanting us to, God is bringing us back in remembrance of all these things. But we have to be willing to, uh, to yield to him. Amen. So you will not be judged by how many spiritual gifts you have. You will be judged by your faithfulness to use the spiritual gift. Our gifts you have been given. Amen. The parable of the tower in Matthew chapter 25 verse, let's just turn, let's just turn that and read Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. Let's just read about the challenge. Verse number 14. Start reading verse number 14 through uh, 14, 14. There's a, quite a few scriptures here, but let's, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. We got time. Start verse number 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his servant, who called his own servant, and de delivered unto him, unto them, uh, and to deliver unto the, to them his goods. Verse 15, and unto one he gave five talents, and to another he gave two talents, and to another he one talent. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. And he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. In other words, he doubled his money. See, I believe that God want us to get involved with the stock markets and stuff like that because of this man. If God caused this man to double his, then I believe God wants us to double ours. And that's why I so that's why I'm starting to try to do a little research in that area to see where can we, how can we uh, apply it to our life? Because we all see we, we may have savings, we may have accounts, we may have savings account, but we need something where we can where we can bring back a return on what we have given, a big return, like the same amount that we give, the same amount that we put in there. We need to be able to bring that amount back with with more. Amen. According to what I'm, according to what we're reading here, and I believe that God wants that for the church not to be broke, Amen. But to learn to be a wise steward, learn to be a wise steward, Amen. And so He said, verse number what? Verse number verse number sixteen. <clears throat> verse number sixteen this is in Matthew twenty-five, verse sixteen. Then he, then he that had the, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Verse 17 And likewise he that had received two, he also gained two others. Two talents. Two, two other talents. Amen. Verse number 18. But he that had received the one went and did what? Digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. You see, this is this is what this is what this is what the Lord called a lazy one. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. He dug and he hid his Lord's money. And after after a long time, the Lord of the of the Lord of those servants cometh and, and and reckoned with them, and he and so he that received the five came and brought unto brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou delivered unto me five talents, behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the, thy Lord. Amen. Verse number twenty-two said, "Also that, also that, uh, also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them." His Lord said unto him, "Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things." 
I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter in, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Verse number 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a, a hard man, reaping where thou hast not strong, and gathering where thou hast not well, reaping what thou hast not sold and gathering what thou hast not straw. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thine that is here, in other words, here's, what's, here's yours. <laughs> Glory to God. And, I, and listen to what the Lord said about this servant. Verse number 25. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful. See, that was a, a lazy person. See, God don't like lazy people. Well, I ain't going to say he don't like them. He, he probably like them. But, but the thing about it that God want productiveness. He want to see people productive. The Holy Spirit is going to make you productive if you yield to the Holy Spirit. If you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to make you productive. This man, he even though he he gave his Lord back that what he had, the Lord took it and gave it to the one that had the ten talent. Amen. And then and then no, and then he said, "To he that hath, the more shall be given, and he that hath not, even that which he hath, shall be taken away." See, that's he talking about that lazy person. Amen. So God wants us to receive the gift that he given us in Acts chapter 2. Amen. The gift of the Holy Spirit. He wants us to receive the gift and he wants us to multiply this gift by putting it to work, by ministering, by sharing, by, by going throughout the earth. Amen. Delivering what God has given. Amen. And by doing so, your, your gift will begin to increase. Your gift will begin to increase so that when 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 you out when you're ministering, before you know it, you're gonna be walking in one gift, but all of a sudden something gonna come up in the midst of the people that are that you're ministering to, and God's gonna switch that gift over to another gift that you didn't have. Now now all of a sudden you're operating in a different gift. Amen. Because I know what I'm talking about. Because some, sometime when I'm ministering I'm operating as a, a, a pastor. Then sometimes I'm operating as an evangelist. Then sometimes I'm operating as a prophet. Amen. I know, and and, and sometimes I'm operating as an apostle. So I know how God how God twist how God uh, reroute the gifts that He placed within you. Amen. I have experienced it many times, and that's why it's so important that we cultivate the gifts. We learn what gift we have been given, and we begin to. Oh my God! Begin to study along the line and get real and get acquainted with that gift by the, according to the Word of God, Amen. And let and and then and as you become acquainted with that gift, let that let the Word of God, oh my God, bring you to a place where you will not only uh, become acquainted with that gift, but you begin to uh, uh, apply that gift in ministry, Amen. In ministry, setting the captives free. Healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils. He said, freely as you receive, freely give it. Amen. Freely give it. So when we look at, when we see what God is saying to us, it's not a hard thing. Amen. A person may have many, a person may have more than one, more than one gift, but no one has all the gifts at the same time. Amen. See, somebody, well, but I don't, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a what they call a, a chief in the gift. I'm a I'm a gentleman in the gift. I got all the gifts working in you. Yeah, lie. <laughs> Just lie. <laughs> you don't have all the gifts working in you. Amen. And no one does. Amen. But the thing about it that as the Lord's will, they will work in you. They will work in you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. So we don't we don't want and, and, and we, we don't want to abuse the gifts. We don't want to abuse the gift. Amen. We want to hold fast to what God is doing. A spiritual gift from God can, can be abused. How you abuse a gift? When someone knows when someone knows that you operate in a certain gift, 
and all of a sudden you you gonna try to force that gift to operate and and what you're doing you are stepping over in the, uh, the wrong spirit you don't you can't force the spirit of God to operate you're gonna cause yourself to yield to another spirit that's not of God and and you're gonna you're gonna taunt that spirit that's in you so you can't push the Spirit of God to move when the Spirit of God doesn't want to move. The Spirit of God moves as He will, not as you will. Amen. He moves as He will. Amen. So we don't want to abuse the gift. Amen. To abuse a gift means to not use it properly. You can uh, abuse spiritual gift by not using gifts given to you, but you know, try to Trying to put yourself in a, an office that you've not been called. Amen. The Apostle Paul told Timothy in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 14, neglect not to the, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Amen. That's uh, 1 Peter, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 14. And then look at 2 Peter, excuse me, 2 Timothy, that was 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Now 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of, of my hand. Amen. See, see, an uh, age minister can release an anointing that will stir you up. Why? Because he's 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 been he's been walking in that gift for, for for decades. Amen. And when he when he used it, it produced. You remember how Marcellus would lay hands on people and how people would would, would, would react? Amen. And uh we, we we can see that. We've seen it. Amen. And then attempting to use gifts not given to you, amen, while ministering. No, no, notice right here, this was, this was Paul was ministering in Samaria. Amen. While ministering in Samaria, Paul, this is Peter, and John met a man named Simon who wanted to have the powerful gifts he saw demonstrate. And Simon offered them money. Amen. Look at in uh, Acts chapter 8, verse number 20. Acts chapter 8, verse number 20 and 21. Acts chapter 8. I'll just start reading verse number 18 through 21. Acts 8, verse 18 through 21. And when Simon saw that through laying on the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he might receive the Holy Ghost. And look at verse number 20, what Peter began to deal with Simon as he was asking this question. Amen. Verse number 20 said, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Verse number 22 says, Repent therefore of this, of, of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Verse 24. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which thou hast spoken come upon me. See, the man of God saw straight through what this man was doing, and the Spirit of God rose up and began to deal with the situation. Amen. 
it was the Spirit of God dealing with the situation through Peter. Now, God wants to use you. He wants to demonstrate his anointing to the world through you. He wants you to become a spiritual tool in his hand. Amen. Spiritual gifts come from spiritual gifts come from the Holy Spirit. They, they do not, they cannot be obtained by any other method. What do you mean, Pastor? The Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, he brought gifts. He brought gifts. Amen. And those gifts were distributed to the church. First apostles, second prophet, thirdly, evangelists, and pastors and teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So these gifts are available to them that will trust him. Amen. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right here. Because I believe that if I go in further, I won't be able to stop. Well, I won't, I won't find a good place to stop. I can't stop. Amen. 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 Marabasoto. My dick is. I just read this scripture right here. Uh, Acts 19, verse 15 and 16. Acts 19. Amen. Another another occasion, seven, uh, seven sons to, to seven sons of of the chief of the priest saw the miracles. Saw the miracles of the apostle Paul, and tried to use the gift to cast out evil spirits. You see, these was not. Spirit filled people that were trying this. Let's look at it. Let me show you real quick. Let me show you real quick. This is Acts chapter 19, verse 15. Verse 15 and 16. Amen. And the evil spirit answered and, and, and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? Amen. <laughs> and the men and the man in whom the devil, the evil spirit, was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. See, they tried to operate in a gift that wasn't given to them. And they almost got killed because they was not operating by the gift of God. They was operating by what they saw. They tried to imitate what they saw. And they did not have the anointing to do so. And apparently they probably was not even born again. Amen. From, the, from, from what we see here. Amen. Because the Bible said, verse number 13, then, then certain of the, of the back, vagabond Jews... Extort took uh, upon them to call over them which uh, had evil spirits. The name of the, the the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, "We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches." See, they didn't even have no presence of God in their life. They heard somebody preach, and then they tried to imitate them. They was not equipped to do so, and they almost got themselves killed. Amen. So we have to be careful how we use the gifts of God. Amen. Father, I thank you that as we take our heart, as we humble our heart before you to learn more of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that you would direct our hearts. And you will help us to understand the gifts that you have placed within each of us. And Father, as we understand the gifts that we will be able to apply to our hearts and to our lives. So that we may be able to minister to them whom we are sent. Father, I thank you for your word. 
because your word is truth and your word is life. Your word is health and healing to all that find them. So we thank you for your word, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name for what you're going to do for the, because of the teaching of your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and take our evening offering. You that are with us by the internet, if you want to sow a seed, you go to my website, LabrickMinistries.com. You can go to my website, LabrickMinistries.com. You can, you can plant your seed or you can use your cash app. Amen. And uh, plant your seed that way. Amen. Now you may be you may be listening to us from uh, Pakistan or from somewhere else around the world. Amen. Africa, India. Amen. And you want to plant a seed. Go to my website. Just look at my website, folks. That's LarryBurkinMinistries.com. And go to my website and you can you can donate your seed there. Every believer should know the power of seed time and harvest. Amen. Every believer should know the power of seed time and harvest. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we give them this opportunity, Lord God, to plant this seed, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that, that before that seed even hit the ground, let it begin to multiply back into their lives. God, I thank you for it in advance. And I ask you, Father, that you would cause their hearts to be attentive to your word and they will have ears to hear what the spirit of God is saying to them so that they may walk worthy of the vocation by which they've been called Father in the name of Jesus I bind every spirit of infirmity I bind every spirit of sickness and disease I bind every cold spirit every flu spirit I bind every, every foul germ that is trying to attach itself to the body trying to uh, bring about uh, a virus or what, or what have you. Father, I bind it in the spirit realm right now and I loose it from this assignment. I release divine health and healing over all that has a need right now in their body. Father, touch in Jesus' name. All oh, glory to God. This Pope been an offering prayer, but, I, <laughs> but God led me on another route on that because I saw something in the spirit, and I and I attacked it right on. I attacked it right on the dot. Amen. But go ahead on and sow your seed right now. And if that prayer meant for you to receive healing, receive that too. Amen. Go ahead and sow your seed. Amen. Did you type that in? The the website address. Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, those of you that uh, sow your seed, I'm going to pray for you. Father, I pray for those that are sowing the seed right now. And I lift them up before you, Father. God, I thank you that your word would not return for them. And as they sow this seed, God, ever since the world been, there's always been seed time and harvest. Father, the seed is a powerful tool that you've given us. And as we plant this seed, God, we release it into your work. We release the seed into your work. And as we release the seed into your work, God, we believe that this seed will begin to germinate, begin to multiply, begin to sprout first the blade, then the ear, then the full corner of the year. And Father, we'll see a thousand times more. A thousand times. It coming back, Father, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over a thousand times more. A thousand times more than we have given. Father, we thank you that it is done now in Jesus' name. And we give you praise, we give you glory for it. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Amen, amen. If anybody needs prayer right now, I pray for you. Nobody want prayer? How about on the end of the day? Anybody need prayer? No? Let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I release the anointing over them, Father, and I declare every need met in Jesus' name. Don't forget to join us uh, this coming Sunday. I have a word from the Lord just in my heart. I mean, it's just ready to come out and begin to minister to you. And I believe that you're going to be 
blessed by hearing this word. We love you. Until then, God bless you. See you then. Bye-bye.